the strategy is absolutely necessary, but it, it is falling flat. Uh, as we've heard, several important measures are missing. Uh, we need to do much more for our farmers and for families who are struggling to eat. And it's neglect, negligent that the government has failed to follow through on these recommendations. This strategy is now not only overdue, but it's, it's a huge disappointment. Specifically, I mean, obviously you've listed sort of it being sort of vague and, and under, under delivering. But what specifically did you want to see, for example, for farmers? Uh, a more robust approach to trade. At the moment, the, the government rhetoric is, is uh, very supportive of farmers, but that needs to be backed by a trade policy that doesn't see them undercut. And we're signing these deals with New Zealand and Australia, uh, with con countries which have lower animal welfare standards, different production systems, and the recommendations that, that relate to trade, introducing these core trade standards, as, as Henry Dimbleby suggested, have not been followed through. So that leaves our, our farmers exposed to, to some of these um, uh, lower quality products, which we're going to end up on our supermarket shelves. The, the impression, Rob, uh, from politicians, the bluster is that, you know, we do this right, we get this right, and Britain will be self-sufficient in food, and we are the government to deliver that. A, could we be self-sufficient in food, and are they the government to deliver that? We certainly could be more self-sufficient in food, but in, in pursuing that ambition, we also need to change what we're eating and how we're farming. For example, at the moment, we, we farm around a billion chickens each year in the UK, and it's far too many. It's Chicken farming is a filthy business. It's environmentally polluting. We need to reduce the, the amount of chickens that we're eating, more fruit and veg, uh, and, and consume more pulses, beans, healthy plant proteins uh, in place of, of, of that chicken. So that, that's just one example. But, but yes, we can be more self-sufficient, but it has to be tied to diet change. And this government is seemingly pathologically averse to, to dietary change. It does not want to go there. It, it feels too much like it's interfering in people's lives. Um, but we do need government leadership in this area. We need to eat less and better meat. Rob, as well as Robert, meat. Robert, just want to ask you something there. Um, I mean, I believe as consumers, we have broken the link between farm and, and feast, you know, the stuff that's, uh, that's on a farm and the stuff that ends up on your table. I mean, people think that, you know, kutam comes from a plastic packet. They don't think it comes from a, a pig uh, or, or whatever. People just don't make that mental connection anymore. But you say chickens are environmentally polluting. And I bet you most people will be scratching their head and thinking, what's he on about? T tell us why. Well, most people associate sort of red meat with, with climate change and, and ill health, sort of beef has a, has a bad reputation. But actually chickens are, are fed on these crops imported from South America, these soya crops, which are grown often in deforested areas. They're, they're covered um, in these toxic pesticides, this soup of, of chemicals, which is poisoning farmers in the Americas. It's killing bees and pollinators. Uh, in, in the UK, once the, those chickens have eaten those crops, they produce this mountain of slurry, all this dung and manure, which runs off the land into the rivers. You go to the River Wye uh, down on the Welsh borders, and the river is dying because of chicken slurry, because of the, the sheer number of birds that we're farming. So we, it, chicken is a really urgent environmental issue, and it's not on people's radar. We do need to eat differently. In defence of this strategy, though, and we've got George Eustace, the Environment Secretary, coming on in the next half an hour. They'll say, well, look, we're introducing as part of this strategy compulsory vegan options in schools, prisons, in the public sector. We're encouraging people to grow their own vegetables, things like cucumbers, to eat wild venison, however middle class that might sound. Uh, technology to help cattle produce less gas. I mean, these are all the sorts of things, surely, that you would welcome. There is stuff in there to welcome. You're absolutely right. And some of the recommendations around public procurement, the food served in schools and hospitals, if they're implemented, would be tremendously positive. The, the recommendation that, that uh, public bodies should procure 50% of their food locally or to higher environmental standards, such as organic, would be tremendously positive. The introduction of, of um, you, you alluded to vegan school meals, um, what we need to see is less and better meat in public institutions. That might mean wholly plant-based meals, but it also means buying British meat, buying local, uh, and, and, and the, the cost equation can be balanced in that way by, by buying higher quality meat and serving slightly less of it that can be made affordable. So this is all tremendously important, but it's contingent on uh, a consultation. Uh, there, there's some loose wording in the strategy. This is an aspiration, not a commitment. Um, so we, we really hope the government follows through with, with all this. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below.
Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.